Chapter 18 Jethro, priest of Midian and father-in-law to Moses, heard the report of all that God had done for Moses and Israel, his people. The news that God had delivered Israel from Egypt. Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, had taken in Zipporah, Moses' wife, who had been sent back home, and her two sons. The name of the one was Gershom, sojourner, for he had said, I'm a sojourner in a foreign land. The name of the other was Eliezer, God's help, because the God of my father is my help, and saved me from death by Pharaoh. Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, brought Moses, his sons, and his wife there in the wilderness where he was camped at the mountain of God. He had sent a message ahead to Moses. I, your father-in-law, am coming to you with your wife and two sons. Moses went out to welcome his father-in-law. He bowed to him and kissed him. Each asked the other how things had been with him. Then they went into the tent. Moses told his father-in-law the story of all that God had done to Pharaoh and Egypt in helping Israel all the trouble they had experienced on the journey, and how God had delivered them. Jethro was delighted in all the good that God had done for Israel in delivering them from Egyptian oppression. Jethro said, Blessed be God who has delivered you from the power of Egypt and Pharaoh, who has delivered his people from the oppression of Egypt. Now I know that God is greater than all gods, because he's done this to all those who treated Israel arrogantly. Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, brought a whole burnt offering and sacrifices to God. And Aaron, along with all the elders of Israel, came and ate the meal with Moses' father-in-law in the presence of God. The next day, Moses took his place to judge the people. People were standing before him all day long, from morning to night. When Moses' father-in-law saw all that he was doing for the people, he said, What's going on here? Why are you doing all this, and all by yourself, letting everybody line up before you from morning to night? Moses said to his father-in-law, Because the people come to me with questions about God. When something comes up, they come to me. I judge between a man and his neighbor, and teach them God's laws and instructions. Moses' father-in-law said, This is no way to go about it. You'll burn out and the people right along with you. This is way too much for you. You can't do this alone. Now listen to me. Let me tell you how to do this so that God will be in this with you. Be there for the people before God, but let the matters of concern be presented to God. Your job is to teach them the rules and instructions, to show them how to live, what to do. And then, you need to keep a sharp eye out for competent men, men who fear God, men of integrity, men who are incorruptible, and appoint them as leaders over groups organized by the thousand, by the hundred, by fifty, and by ten. They'll be responsible for the everyday work of judging among the people. They'll bring the hard cases to you, but in the routine cases, they'll be the judges. They will share your load, and they'll make it easier for you. If you handle the work this way, you'll have the strength to carry out whatever God commands you, and the people in their settings will flourish also. Moses listened to the counsel of his father-in-law and did everything he said. Moses picked competent men from all Israel and set them as leaders over the people who were organized by the thousand, by the hundred, by fifty, and by ten. They took over the everyday work of judging among the people. They brought the hard cases to Moses, but in the routine cases, they were the judges. Then Moses said goodbye to his father-in-law, who went home to his own country. Chapter 19 Mount Sinai. Three months after leaving Egypt, the Israelites entered the wilderness of Sinai. They followed the route from Rephidim, arrived at the wilderness of Sinai, and set up camp. Israel camped there facing the mountain. As Moses went up to meet God, God called down to him from the mountain, Speak to the house of Jacob. Tell the people of Israel, You have seen what I did to Egypt and how I carried you on eagles' wings and brought you to me. If you will listen obediently to what I say and keep my covenant, out of all peoples, you'll be my special treasure. The whole earth is mine to choose from. You're special, a kingdom of priests, a holy nation. This is what I want you to tell the people of Israel. Moses came back and called the elders of Israel together and set before them all these words which God had commanded him. The people were unanimous in their response. Everything God says, we will do. Moses took the people's answer back to God. 
God said to Moses, Get ready, I'm about to come to you in a thick cloud so that the people can listen in and trust you completely when I speak with you. Again, Moses reported the people's answer to God. God said to Moses, Go to the people. For the next two days, get these people ready to meet the holy God. Have them scrub their clothes so that on the third day, they'll be fully prepared because on the third day, God will come down on Mount Sinai and make his presence known to all the people. Post boundaries for the people all around, telling them, warning, don't climb the mountain. Don't even touch its edge. Whoever touches the mountain dies a certain death, and no one is to touch that person. He's to be stoned. That's right, stoned, or shot with arrows, shot to death, animal or man, whichever, put to death. A long blast from the horn will signal that it's safe to climb the mountain. Moses went down the mountain to the people and prepared them for the holy meeting. They gave their clothes a good scrubbing. Then he addressed the people. Be ready in three days. Don't sleep with a woman. On the third day at daybreak, there were loud claps of thunder, flashes of lightning, a thick cloud covering the mountain, and an ear-piercing trumpet blast. Everyone in the camp shuddered in fear. Moses led the people out of the camp to meet God. They stood at attention at the base of the mountain. Mount Sinai was all smoke because God had come down on it as fire. Smoke poured from it like smoke from a furnace. The whole mountain shuddered in huge spasms. The trumpet blasts grew louder and louder. Moses spoke and God answered in thunder. God descended to the peak of Mount Sinai. God called Moses up to the peak and Moses climbed up. God said to Moses, Go down, warn the people not to break through the barricades to get a look at God, lest many of them die. And the priests also, warn them to prepare themselves for the holy meeting, lest God break out against them. Moses said to God, but the people can't climb Mount Sinai. You've already warned us well, telling us, post boundaries around the mountain, respect the holy mountain. God told him, go down and then bring Aaron back up with you. But make sure that the priests and the people don't break through and come up to God, lest he break out against them. So Moses went down to the people. He said to them, Chapter 20 God spoke all these words, I am God, your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of a life of slavery. No other gods, only me. No carved gods of any size, shape, or form, of anything whatever, whether of things that fly or walk or swim. Don't bow down to them and don't serve them, because I am God, your God, and I'm a most jealous God, punishing the children for any sins their parents pass on to them, to the third, and yes, even to the fourth generation of those who hate me. But I'm unswervingly loyal to the thousands who love me and keep my commandments. No using the name of God, your God, in curses and silly banter. God won't put up with the irreverent use of his name. Observe the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Work six days and do everything you need to do. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to God, your God. Don't do any work, not you, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your servant, nor your maid, nor your animals, not even the foreign guest visiting in your town. For in six days God made heaven, earth, and sea, and everything in them. He rested on the seventh day. Therefore, God blessed the Sabbath day. He set it apart as a holy day. Honor your father and mother so that you'll live a long time in the land that God, your God, is giving you. No murder. No adultery. No stealing. No lies about your neighbor. No lusting after your neighbor's house, or wife, or servant, or maid, or ox, or donkey. Don't set your heart on anything that is your neighbor's. All the people experiencing the thunder and lightning, the trumpet blast, and the smoky mountain were afraid. They pulled back and stood at a distance. They said to Moses, You speak to us and we'll listen, but don't have God speak to us or we'll die. Moses spoke to the people, Don't be afraid. God has come to test you and instill a deep and reverent awe within you so that you won't sin. The people kept their distance while Moses approached the thick cloud where God was. God said to Moses, Give this message to the people of Israel. You've experienced firsthand how I spoke with you from heaven. 
Don't make gods of silver and gods of gold and then set them alongside me. Make me an earthen altar. Sacrifice your whole burnt offerings, your peace offerings, your sheep and your cattle on it. Every place where I cause my name to be honored in your worship, I'll be there myself and bless you. If you use stones to make my altar, don't use dressed stones. If you use a chisel on the stones, you'll profane the altar. Don't use steps to climb to my altar because that will expose your nakedness.